It's good to have you join me on the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. Nigeria's first lady, Aisha Buhari, has called for capital punishment for the killer of Hanifa Abubakar, the five-year-old Kanu schoolgirl that was abducted and murdered by her teacher. Buhari shared a short clip of a sermon by an Islamic scholar demanding justice for the late Hanifa, and in the video, the scholar called on the government and human rights groups to pick up the case of Hanifa and ensure that justice is served. The first lady posted a video with a caption saying she is fully behind the cleric's position. Hanifa, a student of Kids Academy, was abducted and killed in December by the proprietor of the school, Abdul Malik Tanko, who has since been arrested and the school closed by the government. And palpable fear gripped residents of Dong village just north local government area of Plateau State after gunmen attacked a mine in sight, killing four persons. The gunmen stormed the mine in sight on Saturday and shot the workers dead, a situation that forced the state police command to deploy more personnel to the troubled community. In a statement issued on Sunday, the police public relations officer Gabriel Uba said the deployment is to forestall the breakdown of law and order. Uba also revealed the command has begun investigations with a view to arresting the perpetrators of the crime. The Trade Union Congress has ordered the federal government to ensure that local refineries are operational before the removal of fuel subsidy is implemented. This move by the Congress is coming out of the federal government hinted that it may end the subsidy program in June 2022. At the end of its National Executive Council meeting, the TUC in a communique directed at state councils and affiliates to prepare for industrial actions if the government goes ahead with its removal plans without meeting the conditions. And Eswatini is set to destroy 10,000 Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccines that have expired. The country's health ministry says the Johnson & Johnson vaccines expired on Tuesday last week, while the AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines are still available and therefore vaccination will continue. The country is also expected to receive more vaccines soon. And I'm in business. The deployment of fifth generation technology has got a boost as the federal government, through the Central Bank of Nigeria, has placed the telecommunications sector on the priority list for access to foreign exchange. The Global System for Mobile Communications Association in late 2021 said Nigeria needs about $500 million and 6,000 base stations to roll out 5G in 10 cities. The CBN's decision means telcos can now access adequate forex to acquire major equipment from overseas for 5G deployment and enhance their other forex-related activities. And on the global scene, Armenian President Amen Sakistian has announced his resignation, citing the inability of his office to influence policy during times of national crisis. Sakistian's president since 2018 was at the center of a domestic political crisis last year that erupted in the wake of a war between Armenia and its long, long-standing rival, Azerbaijan, for control of a long-disputed land. The president's resignation comes shortly after a visit to the United Arab Emirates, after which his office announced he would be taking a leave of absence to undergo medical checks without providing details. And our sports super egos interim head coach Augustin Aguavon says poor officiating by center referee Maguet Ndiaye contributed to his side's defeat to Tunisia on Sunday. The super egos were eliminated from the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations tournament following a 1 0 defeat to the Carthage Egos in their second round clash. The super egos will now shift their attention to the 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers against rivals Ghana following their exit from the competition. Well, that's the latest on the newsroom. To join us again at the top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching.